Hello, and welcome to this analyst conversation on theCUBE, where we are discussing the recent announcements by Dell Technologies, made during the show, Smart Storage for Tomorrow's Opportunities. I'm Bob LaLiberté, Principal Analyst with theCUBE Research, and I'm joined by my colleague, Rob Streche, Managing Director of theCUBE Research, to break these down. Now, to put this in context, AI is driving growth in storage and data management. Our research shows that many organizations are looking for ways to leverage their data for AI in a multi-cloud and efficient manner. Around 20% of organizations cite the lack of budget as a major factor in why they're not making it out of Gen AI POC jail. And 44% are stealing from other budgets, according to the latest October research from our partner, Enterprise Tech Research. Now, let's dig into what Dell Technologies is aiming to solve this and other issues. Welcome, Rob. Hey, great to be here with you. It's always fun to unpack these things with you. Yeah, absolutely. So, let's start with the first thing and, and you know, what's really driving the demand for this intelligent and efficient storage solutions at, in the age of AI? Yeah, I, I think we both know, I mean, Storage is just exploding uh, more so than ever. And I, I think that when you start to look at organizations, and we talked about this with Dell and with their partners from Presidio and WWT, and really dug in to understanding that about 84% of data is actually on-prem. It's like 84% of their critical data is on-prem that you want to use for AI. And really they're looking for ways to drive down the costs of that because of exactly what you were saying, that people are stealing from all over the place. And one of the places they're stealing from is storage. So they're looking for you know, cost-effective, resilient, and flexible systems that can really help them. Got it, got it, that makes a lot of sense. So along those lines, as they're looking for those type of things, what distinguishes Dell's power store in being able to handle some of those generative AI workloads? Yeah, I think when you look at PowerStore, it, it, they've, they've had it out for years, but what they've done is rebuilt it from the ground up. It was focused on eliminating silos and being more versatile, uh, also being very performant and cost effective. So they built it in a way that it's almost like uh, you know software defined inside the hardware so that that is really taking complex tasks and allowing, uh, you know, simplifying those complex tasks and really helping organizations focus on those other more strategic type projects that they're working on. Got it, got it, that makes sense. And I know obviously there's so much data being generated. I like to, you know, people say the only certainties are life or in life are, are death and taxes. I like to say death, taxes, and data growth at this point. <laughs> so, you know, based on that, I, you know, we saw that Dell has a five to one data reduction guarantee. So. What's the significance of that? How's that going to impact the organization? I, I like how it was put to us on, on, on the uh, show where they talked about it, and I think it was Jonathan uh, who talked about the fact that when, when you, and one of the partners, and that really when you look at it, he's never been asked because what happens is you, if you don't hit your five to one ratio, they actually give you more disks, up to 50% of the array's capacity, full capacity to make sure that you have that, that ratio, which is great. But he said that you know, he's not once ever had to give disks and there's no like, hey, you have to sign on the line or something like that and where we give you a discount towards a future array or something of that nature. In fact, uh, the partners were talking about how they're seeing nine to one ratios in the data, data reduction. Uh, and the fact that they could actually, it was breaking their scripts when they were trying to test it uh, at WWT, when they were going through and testing it in their uh, systems, and the scripts were like, hey, it, they actually got data reduction on things they hadn't been able to get data reduction before on. So I, I think that to me proves out that it's, you know, Dell's making it easy, A, to take it down uh, from a data reduction perspective, and it's built in, uh, and it's on, you know, just on always. Right, so they're getting at least that, if not more. So, exactly. absolutely. So, we started talking about AI and Gen AI, and clearly there's a huge energy concern there, sustainability concern. So, organizations need to be able to eke out as much power as they can for their Gen AI deployments that they're doing. So, how does Dell's power store 
contribute to driving higher levels of sustainability and energy efficiency in the data center? Yeah, I think if you look at it, it's in again, you know, both of us have been on the other side of the fence and you start to look at these TCOs and sustainability is a big one where if you can make it smaller, use more efficient parts uh, and really get more per floor tile, you can use and in a more, you know, gigs per watt kind of way, uh, you really hit on some sustainability and some cost savings. So they're using QLC, uh, QLC based uh, products. The first one out is the 3200Q. Uh, that model is really focused on, I think it's a 2U form factor that they really are able to get, you know, extreme density per watt out of. And I, I think that's going to be the key, especially in these small footprints where the data centers aren't able to get more power now, so you got to get more out of the rack. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And we're seeing this across basically all industries, all geos, all looking for more, more energy efficiencies and greater sustainability levels. Absolutely. Um, one of the other things that's really interesting and a hot topic right now is around resilience. Uh, obviously, security is top of mind, especially with these Gen AI environments and the data stores and, and so forth. So how does Dell help from that perspective and ensuring organizations that from a resiliency perspective, the data is always there and available and that it's secure. Yeah, I, I think, again, you look at the heritage of Dell Technologies and PowerStore, it's really built on top of a lot of the stuff that came out of the acquisition of EMC, a lot of that technology, like all of the ability to do snapshotting and protect the data from tampering and making sure there's reliability. Uh, and again, when you start to look at it, that's kind of the first level of defense when you look at cyber resilience and against ransomware and things of that nature. Also, the fact that you can use and back up to cloud using power protect directly without having to go through a backup server. I thought that was a pretty nice thing because again, we're lowering the complexity of protecting the data. And really, I think when they went and rebuilt this all, they took security to heart and built it from a zero trust architecture perspective, which helps from not only external uh, issues or tampering or what have you, but also internal, where we know that a lot of uh, the people who are going to hack into something internally, if you can put a zero trust architecture around it, you can have much better security. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things I want to pick, on, pick up on something you said, you, you commented about reducing complexity. So clearly with all the data growth, as we talked about at the beginning, the you know, distributed nature of a lot of the data and so forth, the environments are getting a lot more complex organizations have to operate a lot more efficiently and so forth. So what has PowerStore, what are they doing to make it easier to use? What have they done from an innovation perspective to make sure that the operators are able to more efficiently and effectively manage their storage? Yeah, I, I, great question because I think when you start to look at it, it starts with the fact that they've made it basically a policy-based architecture where you put in things like uh, protection policies and that protection of policy can be then applied across that which simplifies the fact that if you have you know replication and backups and all of that can be all packaged up as one policy that is shipped and then it's consistent across everything that gets deployed that can also be you know a brought up and uh, to the developers and you know tied in through APIs and it helps to minimize you know risk from human error also dynamic node affinity where they're able to across the entire set of nodes they can actually balance out the controllers and things of that nature which i think goes back into we we even joked about it while we were talking about you know having your phd in storage and having to you know short stroke disks and things of that nature which you know we go back you know 20 years now we were doing uh, which seems crazy now but i think a lot of that they've built in to make you know take the storage, day-to-day -day storage admin role and really bubble that up to help them be more innovative. Excellent, excellent. No, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, we, we touched upon the environments being a lot more distributed, which, you know, we've been tracking from a research perspective. So we've seen not only the adoption of cloud, but the adoption of multi-cloud and then the meaningful adoption and use of multi-cloud environments. Uh, so talk a little bit about how Power Store is helping to optimize users when they have these highly distributed multi-cloud hybrid environments. Yeah, I think when you look at Power Store in particular, they're 
leaning a lot on the solutions like PowerProtect to be able to back up into the cloud, restore in the cloud, and be able to bring different workloads to different places. Obviously, they started out having robust uh, replication technology in there that's efficient and secure. Uh, at the same time, you look at some of this, they're also do using and building in cloud native data mobility and data mobility tools that help them in these uh, clustering environments. Uh, so again, this way they can make changes without there being downtime. I, I think also, you know, again, when you get into this, it's the upgradability and being able to shift side to side, which also ties back to the simplicity of it as well. Got it, got it. So we talked a lot about the beginning, essentially about storage for AI, right? The storage supporting the AI environments. What about if we flip that around? What about AI for storage? How is, how is Dell incorporating AI into power stores management and operations to, to make it a little easier. Yeah, I, I think again, what they've been doing is looking at it beyond the AI ops aspect of it that they have built in and is uh, SaaS delivered now and we talked about Storage Navigator a few months back and they're doing a lot in that space to, to really bring intelligence there. I think also when you look at features like uh, inline and inline dedupe and some of the compression, they're really powered by AI, and they're looking at how do you maximize storage efficiency and how do you get more out of that, what you've already bought. It's also looking at it and managing the, and reducing downtime and being able to really reduce operational complexity. Those are kind of the big major themes that they have when they're focused on how do you use it. You know, as you say, uh, you know, networking for AI, this is, you know, storage for, you know, storage for AI, but AI for storage, which is the manageability part of it. And how do you make it, you know, simpler, faster, and cheaper? Yeah, exactly. Leveraging AI to reduce a lot of the manual tasks that people were doing before, to be able to process vast amounts of data quickly, to be able to alert, right? Whether they automate the change or whether they do it manually, at least, they're able to get to that root cause a lot faster and be able to keep the system optimized for much longer. So that, that makes a lot of sense. It also ties into, since we're talking about AI and everything that's going on and the modernization of it, just thinking about the fact that there has been a significant transition, right? Everyone's been modernizing their applications and, and whatnot, DevOps, containerized workloads. How's Dell supporting that better? Yeah, well, I, they, they joked in the, when I asked the, you know, a similar question to them about the fact that, oh, well, we have developer.dell.com. <laughs> Just go there and you'll be able to see it. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that good, that, that solves part of it. But part of it was you know, having uh, integration with CSI uh, drivers for PowerStore, for Kubernetes, having the fact that they have tans ta uh, Tansible, uh, Terraform and, and Ansible. Ansible. Well, Ansible. It's a new company. It, it actually new, may be once it, the it, acquisition exactly, goes once through. Goes through. But when you start to look at it, they're building into the DevOps platforms as well with Terraform providers and Ansible playbooks. Uh, and then what was funny, we actually got into it with uh, the fact that they're doing ServiceNow integrations. So if you do have tickets or you want to do self-provisioning and things of that nature via APIs, there's actually, a, you can go up to YouTube and just put in uh, you know, ServiceNow integration with PowerStore and it will pop up how you do these integrations to help drive more efficiency so that developers and you can, you know, again, through zero trust and through authentication and that what authorization that they have, build out toolkits that and playbooks and such that, uh, you know, they'll be able to go and out do some of the self-provisioning themselves as well. Okay, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and since we're on modern apps, the, the interesting piece now is that we see that this technology and innovation is really accelerating. So what is PowerStore doing to make sure they're future-proofed to be able to support these evolving workloads and apps? Yeah, I think again, it's how do you change out the underlying infrastructure? It's, it's kind of you know, the running joke of how do you change the uh, engine on an airplane while you're flying kind of situation. And I, I, I think what they're doing is they're building in a lot at the software layer that enables them to be able to do this. Uh, you know, again, the containerized uh, 
based OS that they have in there allows them to shift workloads. So if you have a controller that goes down or you have a bay or disks or what, things of that nature, they can actually go through and fix those. And, and a lot of times because of the telemetry that they already have built in and the AI, they, they know it and they actually find out before the customer that there's an issue and they actually send people out or do things to you know remotely be able to fix that. At the same time, I thought one of the you know pieces, and I think it was WWT again who brought it up, was you know upgrades of, of these massive storage arrays. You know, we're talking petabytes up to exabytes of data is extremely difficult. And with PowerStore and what they've done in the architecture and when they've rebuilt the architecture, really there, there's zero downtime type upgrades. And it's things that you can be up and running, you can move pieces around. It's that kind of always on uh, that really is needed, especially when you're talking about things of AI is underneath that and you're using a database on top of PowerStore and it's you know serving up that data, you can't have it go down if it's answering out to your customers. Absolutely. So clearly we've, we've established the fact that these environments are getting larger, they're, they're getting more complex, right? The environment's getting more critical to be able to access it. So why is ease of use so critical for these storage solutions and how does PowerStore you know, ultimately address that growing complexity in these IT infrastructure environments? Yeah, I, I think, you know, gone are the days of a dedicated storage admin with a PhD in storage from a certain vendor. I mean, we know that. I mean, we've been seeing it in the data that we see on a daily basis from people like ETR and the organizations we talk to. But I think a big piece of that is also, they're not only just stressed, stretched thin, they're looking to optimize and actually really gain uh, perspective. So I think the features like dynamic node affinity where you used to be able to have to go in and switch things around and move workloads. Uh, I think this type of things where they're going to make the lives easier helps them focus on servicing their customers. And their customers in a lot of times are those personas like the, you know, the virtualization and Kubernetes admins or what we would call platform engineering now. And they're part of that team. So Usually they're not just that, they're wearing another hat for another piece of infrastructure, be it network, be it servers, be it virtualization or containerization. So I think that is one of the things they're really big, you know, bigly, if I could use that word, focused on uh, is really driving efficiencies because it, it's got to, it, it almost, it has to operate in a cloud operating model nowadays. Yep, absolutely. Well. Uh, we could probably talk about this all day, but unfortunately that's yeah. all the time we have. So thank you very much, Rob. Well, thanks for, for having me on. And want to thank all of you for watching this analyst conversation about Dell's smart storage for tomorrow's opportunities on theCUBE, the leader in tech news and analysis.